So this talk is going to be about some counterexamples to the alternating series. And well, not counterexample to the theorem, but just to show why each of these conditions is uh, necessary. Okay. So the first thing I want to say is that why the alternating sign condition is necessary. So the alternating series theorem says that if you have a series, uh, the terms are alternating in sign, the magnitudes are going down, and the terms approach zero, then the series converges. Okay. And what I want to first stress is why the alternating signs matter. So what I want to do is I want to show an example where you don't have alternating signs, you still have infinite sign switching. Sign switches, but doesn't, but the series diverges. Okay, let me just remind you what the original theorem said. So the original theorem said that if you have a series something like uh, this, this converges. Why does this converge? Mm -hmm. like meets all three criteria. Meets all three criteria. Well, the first criteria, signs are alternating, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Terms are monotonically decreasing in magnitude, one half, one third, one quarter, one fifth, one sixth, and so on. And the terms approach zero, right? Mm -hmm. So all three criteria. So therefore, uh, it converges. The, sum con the series converges. Uh, we also know from other facts that it converges to natural log of two. And, and there's another theorem called the Riemann series rearrangement theorem, which actually tells us that this particular series, since it's not absolutely converging, you can rearrange to converge to anything else. But that's not the focus right now, right? We just say this converges. Okay. Uh, now I want to say that the fact that the signs were actually alternating strictly plus minus plus minus, that's important. So if I had, if I had like plus plus minus plus plus minus something like this, then even if the other two conditions were satisfied, you, I could still make something which doesn't converge. So can you think of a series which has which has both these two and three are satisfied? And instead of one, you just say that the sign switches between plus and minus infinitely many times, but the series doesn't converge. Can you think of some such series? Can we just use the, the L and two one? Just change the sign. So what do you want to do? One plus one half mm -hmm. plus one third. No, I, I still want it to, the sign to switch infinitely many times. If I just make everything positive, then obviously it won't converge. No, I haven't finished. You can yeah, minus okay. one word. Oh, okay. Yeah. Plus one fifth. Plus one six. Plus one seven. Hmm? Minus one eight. Okay, I, I had planned to do two, uh, two positive, one negative, but you are more uh, conservative, so that's fine. Okay, now this one, it satisfies these kinds. The terms are monotonically decreasing magnitude and the terms approach zero. And the signs switch infinitely often, but it doesn't converge. Why does it not converge? Uh, well, they don't go towards one point. Well, why? So you look at the sum of these three minus this. You can show it's. Uh, it's greater than or equal to, it's strictly greater than two times one fourth, right? You're adding three things, all of which are greater than this, and then you're subtracting this. So this is greater than two times one fourth. This sum is greater than two times one eighth, right? Mm -hmm. Three things minus one, okay. And now, so this thing is greater than two times one quarter plus one eighth plus and does this con converge? No. No, right? Because this is just two quarter times one plus one half plus one third plus. Okay. And this diverges. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's the counter example to show that you actually do need strict alternation of signs. Okay. The next one I want to challenge is a monotonically decreasing in magnitude. So I want to give examples, an example where the signs are alternating, the terms approach zero, but they're not monotonically decreasing in magnitude. And it doesn't converge. Can you give such an example? Can I just randomly switch the orders of the sequence that we just used? 
Yes, we can, but that would actually be a, be painful to write down. Uh, so let's think a bit more. I'll write down something I have in mind. So I have uh, one minus one third plus one half minus one sixth plus one third. I mean, what you said will work. It's just it would just be more painful to write that down. Plus one quarter minus one twelfth. Okay, so signs are alternating, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the terms approach zero, right? But they're not monotonically decreasing in magnitude, right? Yeah. So, and, and, and I'm claiming that this sum actually doesn't converge. Do you see why this doesn't converge? No, immediately. Well, let's uh, group the terms. If you group the terms like this, if the original sum converged, then the group sum would also converge because this is just picking out the even numbered partial sums. What is this? This is two thirds. Uh, yeah, it's two over three times two. This is two over three times three. It's two over three times four. So this is just two thirds times one plus one half plus one third plus one quarter okay okay and this again diverges so we've seen that that both these conditions are necessary right you cannot you cannot vary uh, remove them easily what about the third condition what happens if the terms don't approach zero what happens if the terms don't approach zero so let's go back to our proof well, we did something like that, right? Mm -hmm. To say that the series converges. What would happen if the terms didn't approach zero? There will be a alternate between two numbers. And what would be the gap between those two numbers? Two times this magnitude of the limit. Not two times. It will just be the magnitude of the limit. Or the limit of the magnitude. So if, if let's say, limit k approaches infinity of uh, mod a k is a constant c greater than zero then your uh, upper ones and your lower ones will be separate the, the limit of the lower ones and the limit of the upper ones will be separated by how much a k not a k twice a k not a k, a k is the thing whose limit you are taking, c. c, right? In the limit, so the lower things, the ones, so if, you, if your first term was positive, then the odd number things would be the, would be the bigger ones, and so what would the odd number things be? It would be the bigger ones, and they would be going up or down? No, I mean a1, then a1 plus a2 plus a2, is this smaller than this or bigger than this? The first one is positive? Yeah. Bigger than that. Which one's bigger? The first one. A1's bigger than A1 plus A2 plus A3, which is bigger than. So these are sort of going down, right? Mm -hmm. So these are the bigger ones and they're monotonically decreasing. Right? So you have A1, then A1 plus A2 plus A3. So these are going down. And the even numbered ones, they are the smaller ones and they are going up or down? Up. Up. However, if the magnitude, the limit of the magnitude is something bigger than zero, then the even ones going up and the odd ones going down are not going to meet. The limits here are be, will be separated by what? C. C, because that's how much you're jumping. Okay, so, so we actually see that all these three conditions matter, but the third one is interesting because if you change that, you get, you get some related theorem, okay? So, so that's why the alternating series from all these conditions matter. Okay, one more quick thing I want to say is that the alternating series theorem doesn't say anything about absolute convergence. Okay, so you can have an alternating series that doesn't converge absolutely. What's an example? An alternating series that converges, so it satisfies this based on this theorem, but doesn't converge absolutely. Hmm? The example we've been using all the time. That's fine. Can you give an example of an alternating series that converges absolutely? So this is only conditionally convergent. 
Can you give an example of something which converges absolutely? Uh, you can square the terms. Okay, so you get one minus. One fourth hmm. plus one minus. So this series sort of converges uh, by the alternating series theorem, but it also converges absolutely. So it sort of converges for two different reasons. Okay, it also converges absolutely. And uh, so, so what I'm saying is that the alternating series theorem allows us to deduce convergence for some series which are not absolutely convergent, and there are some series which are already absolutely convergent, and gives us another reason why the alternating uh, thing should be convergent. Okay.